Adding a custom sidebar to your spreadsheet can really level up the experience. It's so flexible, we even made a word game out of it last time. It takes in HTML and CSS as well as scripts, so you can basically do anything you want with it. The only downside to a custom sidebar is that you're limited to 300 pixels in width, which really isn't that much space to work with. But what if I told you that you can multiply that space to three or even four X by using something called tags? By the end of this video, you're gonna have all the skills you need to create a custom sidebar with tabs that changes out the content dynamically when that tab option is clicked. All right, so the first thing we need is a script editor. So we'll go to extensions and then click on app script to open up our script editor. And then we're gonna open up a new HTML file, which we're going to call tabs demo. Yeah, I know, I'm so creative. And then we're going to rename our code.js file to config, because it's gonna be our configuration. Yeah. Anyhow, we're going to create a function called on open, and this is going to do spreadsheet app .get UI. Basically, this is what's going to create the new custom menu option and add in the item or option for tabs demo, which is going to utilize the custom sidebar function that we're going to write right after this. And this custom sidebar is going to declare an HTML variable, which we're going to set to HTML service dot create template from file. And we're gonna create the template using the tabs demo HTML file that we created earlier, cause you know, super creative title. And then we're gonna set that title to tabs demo. Uh, from there, we're going to call spreadsheet app .get UI and then show the sidebar. Let's go back to our spreadsheet and we should see a custom menu option now after we reload, we hit the tabs demo option and it's gonna open up the sidebar and it's blank because we don't have anything yet. So back over to our HTML file, ain't nobody got time to write custom CSS. So we're gonna leverage something called Bulma. No, not that one. We're going to leverage Bulma CSS. Bulma CSS is a modern CSS framework that's free and open source. It contains a lot of pre-built components that you can utilize in any of your projects. I'll leave a link in the description below for anyone who wants to browse the documentation because there's just really a lot of it. Uh, so take your time through it. For us, we're just going to go ahead and grab the HTML link uh, so that we can import that into our HTML template which is really simple to do. All we have to do is take that link and then put it in between the header uh, elements that we have up top. And now we're going to add in our tab. So we're gonna open up a div uh, element and then we're gonna set the class to tabs. We're gonna create an unordered list underneath of it with a bunch of list items. And those list items will have uh, uh, anchor tags for the links and then a span uh, tag that which we're gonna put some text in there. We'll make the class a uh, class of tab links and we'll make four of these. Uh, so that we have four different options for our tabs. And now for our container content, which we're going to open up a new div tag again, and then we're gonna set that to a class of container. Within it, we're going to create nested div elements, the same number of options that we had for our tabs, which is gonna be four. And then each one of these is gonna get a class of tab content. And we'll add an ID value, so that's unique. So we'll just use the tabs title. And since it's a demo, we're just gonna add some placeholder text in here. We might as well just use Bowman's built-in style classes like title so that we can make those nice and large and viewable. Before we move forward, let's go ahead and run this. So we refresh it by clicking on the tabs demo and this is going to load up and we can see we got our tabs and we got our content. The only difference is that we can't click on anything. So that's the next thing we're going to do, some JavaScript. We're going to create a new function called open tab, which takes in two parameters, event and tab title. We're going to declare some variables and for the tab content, we're going to set that to document.getElementByClassName. So this is the tab content that we just created before. We want to target those and then we want to iterate through them and set the style for display to none so that it gets hidden. And then we're going to replace anything uh, or any case where it has is active in there. Once we have that, we're going to do the same exact thing for the tab links, and these are the tabs up top. Uh, the main difference between here is that we won't set the display to none because we always want those tab links to be displayed. From there, we're going to set the target uh, by getting document.getElementById. We're gonna pass through the tab title here, which is important that each tab title is unique because we're going to use that over here. Then we're gonna set the display to block, which is essentially making sure that it gets shown. And from there, we'll remove the is heading class and replace that with an is active class. Lastly, uh, to make the tab shown as active to the user so they know which one to select it, we're going to just add a class to the parent element and the parent element because the list item is the one we want to set it to, not the anchor item. To get our JavaScript into our file, we're just going to open up a new script tag at the bottom below body and we're just going to copy and paste it in. And that's basically how you get JavaScript into an HTML file. Now, before everything is going to work like magic, we have to add an on-click uh, event into our anchor links, and we're just going to pass through tab, uh, open tab, 
with the event and then home. So we just pass that as text and we'll do this for all the different links that we have and we'll add in the customized uh, unique value for each one. So list, form, and then settings. From there, we're going to go down to our tab content and then we're going to add an is hidden to everything except for the first one so that when the page initially loads, nothing will show except for the first item. So back to our spreadsheet, let's refresh our custom sidebar. We'll see in here that things load up and only the first uh, container of tab content. When we click into other tabs, we're going to display the other things. This is essentially how you do it. So everything is hooked up, but there's so much more that you can do with Boma. In fact, look at this. You can have cards, which is you can make these as pretty as you want. You can have input forms with all different types of experiences with it. Drop down boxes, paragraph text bars. Uh, check boxes, radio buttons. You can even include this to have like an API key if you really wanted to. Not to mention, customize this as much as you want to add in some tweet information or things from an API. Continue loving up with this video here. You don't want to miss it because it's awesome. Wait, wait. Ta-da!